Hey everyone, Mucklick here, and I like game reviews that don't waste time and don't spoil the game. This is Resident Evil 4, a third-person action survival horror developed and published by Capcom and released in 2023. It is available on PC, PS4, PS5, and Xbox with an M for Mature rating. It is a remake of the 2005 RE4, but rather than comparing the two, I'll only be reviewing the 2023 game on its own merits. In full disclosure, Capcom was kind enough to give me a copy of the game for my work, but the goal of this review is to determine whether or not this game is worth its $60 price tag for the average gamer. The setting for the game, with no spoilers beyond the opening. You play as Leon Kennedy, a man with extensive military training and a survivor of previous evil residents. The president's daughter, Ashley, was kidnapped and you've been sent to try and rescue her by any means necessary. You quickly learn that this is more than just greedy kidnappers as you encounter cult worshippers, mutated people, and grotesque creatures. The general gameplay is to get through it alive, which sometimes Sometimes means sneaking past enemies, killing enemies, solving overly complicated puzzles to open doors, and conserving ammunition and healing items to get through the fights without running out of consumables. Once you get to Ashley, you also have to keep her alive on top of the other items. RE4 took me over 16 hours to complete. In that time, I finished the main story and a handful of the optional content you can do to earn more supplies from the merchant. If you did 100% of the side quests, you would get more playtime out of it. Additionally, the game does have a new game plus mode, giving a higher challenge if you enjoyed the game and want to go through it again, which would add more time for your purchase. Comparisons to other games. Obviously, the game is spot on similar to the other Resident Evil games in the franchise, but also similar to some other horror shooters such as Dead Space and The Evil Within. If you have never played an RE game, it's pretty easy to imagine horror, puzzle, and shooter concepts, but there is a bit more. The characters all have a weight to their movements. Leon turns like an obese jet ski, takes a few moments to build up speed when moving, and cannot change directions on a dime. If you are coming from playing an FPS or an MMO, it will feel like your character is wading through syrup and takes time to get used to. The details. The artwork in this game is quite possibly its strongest feature. They did an incredible job with every aspect of the graphics in this title, from the people to the objects to the environment. 10 out of 10 in this department. Sound and music. The music was mostly memorable in fights, where it would amp up and make an already tense situation much more so. What really shined in the sound design was the combat itself. The crunch when Leon would melee an enemy. The shattering noise of a knife breaking off. The clicks and clacks as he reloaded his firearms. And the grotesque slithering and chittering of the monsters he faced. Controls. The game can be played on keyboard and mouse or a controller. Although the keys do allow rebinding, it has limitations which I feel make this the game's weakest point. Here are some issues I encountered on keyboard and mouse, and I am told by some controller players that these have some overlap there as well. Dodge and crouch are the same button and cannot be separated, leading to instances of you trying to do one and accidentally doing the other. Your knife hand attacks occur whenever you click while not zoomed in, meaning you cannot hip fire. You have to zoom in to fire your weapon, which sometimes is not ideal. If you do not zoom in and you click the fire button, you will swap to your knife and stab at the air. Leon can parry with his knife, however in most games with parry I assign it to right click on my mouse. But right click in this game is zoom in with gun. And since the knife isn't a separate weapon you can swap to, you are forced to assign parry to another key. The game recommends the space bar. Ugh. There was also a few really weird defaults, like pressing the V key to open the map, but those were easily rebound, so it was okay in that regard. As mentioned earlier, steering Leon is like driving a jet ski indoors, and since the game has no jump button, you can get stuck on any solid object, even a small rock or a piece of wood on the ground. This is not necessarily a problem, just something that takes getting used to. Saving system. The game auto saves at key points, but has manual saves whenever you find a typewriter. There's also one in rest areas near the merchants, as well well as other key locations. Content creator concerns, none. I streamed my entire playthrough on Twitch and uploaded the entire thing to our Muckluck Plays YouTube channel and did not experience any muted VODs or have any issues with copyright claims. Do I have anything negative to say? Aside from the controls issue already mentioned, I encountered a few small items. There were a few cutscenes that triggered while an enemy was approaching me. After the cutscene, the enemy was landing hits on me, making it clear the game did not pause during the cutscene. This was not true for all cutscenes, but for some of them. The Bolt Thrower. This weapon shoots bolts that you can 
been picked back up, meaning ammunition was less stressful. However, the bolts would sometimes fall through the world or get stuck at a location you couldn't interact with and would not be retrievable. In terms of the rest of the game, it was 99% bug free. I only encountered one other true bug on my playthrough, which was a cow clipping in and out of a wall, which killed Ashley while it was seizuring around. <laughs> no, never mind. The, the cow killed Ashley. Do you have to play any other games to understand this one? You would pick up on more things if you had played the other RE games, but no, it is not required. If you can understand, I'm a government agent who is really good at unaliving people and I need to rescue that girl from some creepy dudes, then you could enjoy this title. Final thoughts. I said a lot of complaints on this one, and it's important to note that most of them were not bugs, but design choices that I didn't care for. Things like the control issues would be of no concern to some gamers. If you are already a fan of this genre, this game slash remake is excellent within its niche. If you've never played a game of this type before, just remember the things I mentioned going into it so that hopefully you avoid the same frustrations that I had. Due to good storytelling, incredible graphics, the game length, and clunky controls, I think the game is a bit overpriced at $60. Unless you you plan on doing multiple playthroughs of it. If not, I would absolutely consider picking it up during its next sale, if this sounds like your jam. Once again, this video was not sponsored, so if you enjoyed it, please consider hitting that like button to help us out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more content. If you'd like to see more of my own playthrough of Resident Evil 4, I'll include a link to that playlist from our other channel down below. As always, a massive thank you to our dear patrons who make content like this possible. If you'd like to become a supporter and earn early access to my projects, there's a link in the description. Don't forget Ashley. Please.